So here we have the Smart Valve app. So this is what the DSTs are using out in the field at the moment in the 7 Trent Trailer Smart Valve. So I've logged into the app using the username and password, and this is the first screen that the DSTs will see. So on this screen, this is where they receive their jobs. So jobs are set up in two ways. They can be set up by network control. So network control will set up a valve operation and send it down to the technician. So sending one out directly to a named technician who's using smart valve. And this is what's happened in this instance. So I have one job here indicated on the screen. At the bottom, you can see one of one, and that's my job card there. So I've got a valve that I've been asked to operate that ends in 087, and that's my job card. So I'll come back to that in a short while. Um, but when the technician logs into the smart valve application, there's a number of things that they can do. So they can click on the navigation at the top here. Um, first and foremost, they can search for any valve. So all the valves that we have from 7 Trent have been downloaded from your GIS system and uploaded into the Smart Valve application. So they can start searching for valves. Two ways of doing this. They can go to where they're going to operate a valve, stand within the DMA and press search. And what that will do is that will say, well, I understand where you are in terms of your GPS location, so I'm going to pull back the valves which are closest to your current location. So obviously I'm not stood in the 7 Trent DMA uh, doing this little demonstration for you, but I've set it up so it's going to pull some valves back that are closest to my current location. So it will then list all of the valves that are on that DMA. So the one that the DST is stood on the top of should appear at the top of this list, and then subsequent ones on the DMA will appear down this list. And it will list 100 results. As they move, those 100 results will change based on their current location. So Smart Valve knows where they are at every single step of the way, and obviously knows the location of every valve from your GIS system as well. So if they want to then look at any of these valves, they simply press the button, and that opens up the valve detail for them to have a look at. So we'll come back to that in a second. Also on here, provide them with the ability to look at their operations. So any jobs they've yet to complete, which is the one on my job card, but also recently completed jobs. This gives them an idea of the jobs that they've recently completed on Smart Valve, with the newest ones being at the top and then subsequent ones being underneath. So it gives them a flavour. Depending on what the type of job is, it may order them slightly differently. So there's some 2nd July ones here, depending on the operation, whether it's an update to a valve or a turn to close operation. So it'll always put the, um, the real operations above the update valves in terms of the chronological order and in terms of importance. So obviously if you've turned a valve, it's more important maybe to go back and look at that rather than you've just updated some of the data. We also give them the opportunity to ask for help so obviously if we're training a new system, we provide them with a lot of resources that can be accessed within the app. So they have a quick start guide, which helps them understand what the app does. All the DSTs have been trained by ourselves for the trial, but they have a quick start guide, which goes over all the major elements. There's training videos on the YouTube channel, which you can search for just by typing in Smart Valve to YouTube. And we give them a route to get support directly from the team at Smart Valve through the app. And also to suggest feedback as well. So there's something they'd like to see within the app and they have the ability to submit feedback. So if we go back to the home page there, so we talked about searching on the DMA. They can also search by a particular asset number as well. So if you wanted to just type directly in the asset number of a particular valve and then press search, that should just bring that valve back based on the unique asset ID that's stored within the system. So really easy to search, really quick for them to find the information that they need. So going back to the home page, we're going to have a look at this job that we've got and see what they can do when they're in there. So we simply click on the job card with our thumb and that opens up the detail for this file. So we split the page here and use some of the features available on smartphone devices. So here we can now visualize the valves sat within the DMA. So you can see the DMA boundary there. If they then click on that with their thumb, that opens up the full DMA. So you can see all of the valves within the DMA that they're going to operate. The colour codes mean whether they're open, closed or unknown. So green obviously means it's open. A grey in this sense means that we don't know the current status of the valve. And if we scroll into this cluster down here, so the one we're operating is the lighter green that just hits up on the spur there. And you can see we've got four valves around it. One of those valves is closed as well. So if they're stood on there, obviously I'm not stood at this location at the moment, they would also appear on here as a blue dot. So they can walk around the DMA and walk basically right up to a valve, stand on top of it. They can click any of these valves as well and say view that valve's data. So any valve that sits within this DMA structure, they can go directly to that 
and set up an operation directly from the device if they need to isolate that valve for whatever reason they can do that as reactive work while they're out doing their day-to-day -day activities we'll just go back into the job card now so now there's two things that we're going to ask the um, the DSTs to do they obviously got their operation to do so to find that operation they scroll up on the screen and they can see their tasks so the task that they have is a single operation which is indicated by the single icon there on the blue background um, and if they had any grouped operations they'd be in this green background below so a grouped operation can be set up by network control so that can cut across multiple valves and multiple technicians you set up an operation say it's a six valve close and you can assign that to different technicians to shut or open those six valves so it appears as a group as the tech signed in you would see where you appear in that group so if i was third in that list then i wouldn't be able to do my job until jobs one and two have been done it would then release my job job three i would do mine that release job four five and six for other technicians to do once that's done that grouped operation we marked as complete and it would be seen within the web app and you see exactly the time and date down to you know the second of when those operations had taken place. So all that data flows back to the web application, which we'll have a look in. Underneath that, if there are any images associated with this valve, they appear there, but the tech can actually take images and we're asking them to take images of all the valves um, and mark them as well. So if you take an image, you can annotate it as well. So you can put notes on the picture for subsequent DSTs who are gonna operate that valve. And also then there's a history here as well. So you can see who's been operating the valve and what they've done. And then there's a little icons there, which tell you a little bit about that operation, whether it was a planned or an ad hoc operation, whether it was successfully completed and whether it was accurate or not. So it gives us some really valuable information about the history of what's going on there. So we'll come back to tasks in a minute. The other thing they'll be asked to do is look at the valve data. So we've updated um, everything within SmartVal from your current GIS system, but there are uh, bits of data that could be missing for each particular valve. So if they click on the triangle icon in the top right, they'll be able to view the missing data for this particular valve. So critical data that we need is the size of the valve. We need the orientation of the valve. We need the diameter unit, so whether it's inches or millimeters. And we'd also want pictures to be taken for a valve as well. So this one, we've got the missing diameter unit. So we know we have to go into the valve and add that in and find out what that is and update the valve. We need that information because within the web application, every single valve, if we have the size and the orientation, will be automatically given a Calm Networks valve turn profile. So that means that if the valve is, say, a four inch valve and it's nine turns in total, the smart valve application, based on information from 7 Trent, would say, right, 90% of a closed operation can be done at one speed, and the last 10% has to be done at a much lower speed, and then it reverse that for the open operation. So that's the standard for Calm Networks operation. And we would assign that Calm Network turn profile to a turn or a closed operation dynamically as set up by network control. So if we haven't got that information, then Smart Valve can't do that. It can still send the job, but it won't be able to send the turn profile, which ensures it guides the user on how to turn the valve effectively. And turning the valve effectively is the, you know, the main thrust behind Smart Valve. If we can turn all manual valve operations to Calm Network standards, we're less likely to introduce pressure into the network, which will lead to ultimately less leaks and bursts, but also less water discoloration incidents. So we're trying to make sure the behaviors, the calm network behaviors are embedded within this operation. We're not trying to teach the DSTs to suck eggs. You know, they know how to turn the valves correctly, but it is providing guidance. And then that guidance has been able to be visualized on the web application after each turn. And there's also a way that they can set the job up themselves that doesn't have that guidance with it. And I'll show you how they do that as well. So we're then trusting them to do the operation to a calm network standard. But again, Smart Valve records how that valve's been operated. So it's easy to see whether we have followed, you know, the proper turn profile for that valve. So we click back on the triangle there and we go into edit valve details. It then gives them the opportunity to add any of the missing data. So you're not going to be changing the valve asset number, but you could change the valve type in here because it's not set at the moment. So we could pick from a list what we wanted to have in there. Here we're missing the diameter. So we'd want to put in the diameter, whether it's inches or millimeters by picking in here and adding those drop downs. So I'm not going to change it. This is a live system. But here there's other data we can add. So, you know, the orientation, pressure readings, if you're doing flushing turbidity. 
and then they can go and actually look and change the location. So this will update the location of the valve within Smart Valve. That will then be given uh, back to the business in terms of an update to GIS. At the moment, there's no integration during the trial, but we will be looking to integrate that live with GIS data at some point in the future, should the trial be successful. So they can go and click on this map. It opens up the DMA view again so they can pinch and scroll in. And if they think, well, actually, this is not in the place that I think it is, I can just tap on the screen and hold it, and then I can move that along the network. So I can move it to there, press set as current location, and then that would move it to that place. Obviously, I won't move it because it's live data. I'll leave it where it is. And then finally, they can take images so they can just add a new photo from here by clicking on that icon, opens up the camera, take a photo, save the image, annotate the image, and then save that data. So I won't save that. They click the tick to save it. I won't save it for this instance for the purposes of updating that valve. So now they've updated the valve data, then that's great. We've got some new data flowing back into the business. We go back to the operation that they've got to do. So here I'm going to click my turn to close operation. So it's going to give me a warning, basically saying, well, actually, you're nowhere near this valve. You're miles away from it, so you're sure you can actually operate it. But obviously, we're doing this for the purposes of demonstration, so I'll override it. So now it's going to talk through the process. So you'll see from the presentation video earlier of how to attach the phone to the valve key using the quad locking system. So once we've done that, we're ready to operate the valve. We'll confirm the initial status of the valve. So it's open in this case. Smart valve knows that the valve is open. So we don't need to change it, but they can change it if they want to simply by clicking these icons. So we confirm it's closed. We then press calibrate. So this is opening up the sensors in the phone. We use a variety of sensors within the phone to detect the speed of the turn, the direction of the turn, how many turns, um, and use some other um, sensors in there to pick up some other information that sits behind the scenes. So now this has got me into the uh, Calm Network's turn profile. So this one's got two steps. So this is step one of two, which is two turns clockwise at no more than 40 RPM. So when I press start, SmartVal is going to talk me through the process from there on in. Step one of two, two turns clockwise at no more than 40 revolutions per minute. Begin in three, two, one, start. So it was quite quiet on there because I'm recording this screen, but it was telling me on the countdown to start the operation. So now if I turn this the wrong way. Warning, you seem to be turning this valve in the wrong direction. You can see that the screen flashes and the smart valve is telling me I'm turning in the wrong direction. But if I turn it in the right direction, then everything should be as is. And it's going to ask me to turn it to around to two turns. So when I get around to two turns, this profile step is now completed. Smart valve's if you me still need to operate the valve further, you can continue. When you are finished, press, finish, press finish step. So now it's going to talk me through step two. So this is 2.2 turns clockwise at no more than 5 RPM. So it's a much lower speed for this part of the turn. So again, step when I press start, two. it will talk me two down through the process. turns clockwise at no more than 5 revolutions per minute. Begin in 3, 2, 1, start. So now if I go too quickly. Warning. You seem to be turning this valve too fast. You can see the red flashes again. It's giving me an audio warning as well, saying I'm turning the valve too fast. I've, I've got it turned down on the main settings here, so I can talk as well as do that presentation. Warning. So you here I'm going to try and turn valve the valve really fast. slowly, which is quite difficult to do in my hand. Warning. You seem to be turning and this valve too fast. You can see the error fast. warnings each warning. time that I you seem to be turning break this the valve speed. Too fast. So this is really going to look at the behaviours of the technician out in the field and give you those audio and visual clues if we are deemed to be turning the valve Warning. too fast, you seem to be we turning be this valve too fast. Against Warning. the network you seem profile to be turning this, this valve, valve too operation. fast. So I'm going to turn this that round. This profile step is now completed. Get to the step completed. So now smart valve said I've completed further, that turn. Now, if this valve finished, operation still isn't completed, i.e., the valve isn't closed in this particular instance, they just carry on turning the valve. They don't press finish. They carry on turning the valve until it's closed. Smart valve will still record all of that data as it goes through. But I'm going to say it's finished now. Press next. And now we have the ability for them to say, well, was this per turn profile accurate for this type of valve? So did I turn the valve correctly? And was the profile that was sent to me accurate or inaccurate? So it's in the currently inaccurate state, but I'm going to mark this as accurate. Press next. Confirm the valve status is now closed. We'll confirm that. And I finish. So that's now done. So you can see in my history now, it's pulled up the turn to close done by me just now on the 2nd of the 7th. And you can see that that operation in my taskbar has now gone. 
Um, so that's how easy it is for them to carry out the task once it's done. If I now get back to my home screen, you'll see once this refreshes that there's no pending operations now. So that job has been completed and there's nothing left for me to do on that particular valve. So every time network control send a job, they receive the job card, they carry out the job. Once they've done it, that's disappeared and that data is sent back through the mobile network through to the web application and we'll be able to have a look at that in a few minutes. So the other way that technicians can do that is if they search for the valve directly themselves. So if they have a job on the tough book and it's not set up by network control, they can literally pick the valve. So pick the same one I just operated again. They can go in and they can add an operation themselves. So the valve is currently closed. You see from the red dot at the top. So I can set a turn to open operation there and then they can just carry out that same operation. With this one, there won't be any guidance that goes along with it. So when I go into this operation, I'll get the same warning again. I'll go through the same steps as we did before. I'll calibrate the valve. So that's loading up the sensors and starting doing the reading as it did before. But when I get through to the turn step, this is what we call an ad hoc turn operation. So now if I just ad press start, there's no Begin clues. In. It's not telling Three, me how many steps. It's two, not step one or two. It one. just counts me down, tells start. me to start. And I can turn the valve in any direction at any speed that I want to. And this is just the technician turning a valve as they've been trained, but smart valve still recording it. So I can turn it round to you know the four turns. Press finish. It's not going to ask me if it is accurate or inaccurate. It's just going to say confirm the valve's now open, which it is. Finish and done. And again, you can see on the history now that we've got the turn to close we did and now the turn to back open for that particular valve. So really easy for the tech to actually set those up themselves from the device. And we're seeing a few of those go through as well as the planned operations go through from network control. So that's a quick overview of the app. Obviously, there's a few more things that the technicians can do in using the app, but that gives you an idea of the main functions and how they use it out in the field.